I'm very happy uh, to announce uh, the panel discussion. So uh, in the panel discussion, you will see um, four short, very, very short uh, um, comments, uh, starting with uh, Sabine uh, and Georg from essentially the outside perspective. So we would <laughs> like to uh, uh, have a three to five minutes presentation uh, or um, points on how you, uh, Sabina, how Ethniel, and you, Georg, how e ELE sees Clarin and uh, what expectations uh, you have with respect to Clarin uh, with respect to the um, uh, multilinguality infrastructure. And then um, Jurgita from the National uh, Fed, uh, from the National Consortium um, in Lithuania. Uh, will present the perspective of a Clarin um, uh, national initiative that is uh, also involved in the National Coordinators Forum. And uh, Francisca de Jong, uh, the uh, executive director of the Clarin ERIC, uh, will summarize and will uh, present the Clarin perspective on these issues. But as mentioned, I would like to uh, uh, give the floor back to uh, Sabina. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Andreas. I already took a little bit beforehand and the, um, the expectations uh, of uh, ethnic members to Clarin. So I said that they were actually quite satisfied, those who were using uh, the infrastructure, but uh, quite a number of, of the ethnic members are not using it. So that's, of course, an interesting point to try to address, to see whether we could promote Clarin uh, much more to, um, to ethnic members. And one way of doing this is, of course, uh, maybe promotion of news, um, what is happening in Clarin, and maybe using also ethnic uh, the the infrastructure and our communication system to to send some of the interesting news on to our members. Uh, there are uh, Clarin has conferences and so has Afnil and there could be some mutual uh, exchange there whenever that is relevant. For instance, especially this year where we are looking at lang language technology. Um, it could also be possible for Clarin maybe to tap into some of Afnil's project. I think spe specifically. Uh, plain language and terminology could be an interesting area. Um, and it could also be maybe that EFNA could be helpful in figuring out how to cover more languages, um, because many EFNA institutions do have responsibility for minority languages in, in their country. Uh, so they have a more direct link in, in that um, respect, especially, for instance, sign languages. It's in many cases located under ethnic institutions. Um, there could also be a very good uh, case in cooperating on policy and legal issues, as I mentioned. And, um, and if you can see uh, and a good idea in that, it would be also possible maybe to include questions about language resources and use of infrastructures in, in our European language monitor. As I showed you, our members are quite um, happy to, to answer questions and also to, to share their knowledge about specific aspects that, that could be interesting in, interested in, in being followed. Um, there could be uh, some joint projects as well. So something about, for instance, collection of multilingual language data, or um, some of our, our members are also interested in open language teaching environments. And uh, when I looked at the, the um, uh, language observatory, I could see that there were not that many grammar and, and uh, dictionary collections, for instance, and it might be possible that EFNA could be helpful in in that respect yes <clears throat> thank thank you a lot uh, sabina and uh without further ado i would give the uh, give the word to georg uh, to mention a little bit um to allow him to mention what wishes probably Ili uh, has to to the clarion uh, group <laughs> yeah there's thanks andreas not much more that i can add uh, to what I already mentioned in the presentation, ELE is a super ambitious project, as you have seen. 
we have many partners in the consortium. We have many possible directions in which to go and in which to develop this strategic research agenda. We have many motivations from the different stakeholders. We have companies, we have research teams, we have research centers and universities and wider uh, initiatives and associations like EFNIL and ELN and ECSPM. And they are all doing what they do uh, with lots of passion, obviously, and, and lots of um, lots of great substance, but they all work with different assumptions and uh, underlying motivations, which is only natural. So um, one of the challenges will be to fix all of this uh, into a very clear and well thought through strategic agenda. Um, and I would also want to stress again that this opportunity comes about only once in a decade, so we better make use of it. Um, it will be a challenge to model everything, all the different pieces into one coherent agenda. And uh, my expectation towards Claren is, um, yeah, that they participate in the project with substantial expertise, substantial suggestions. Um, yes, I mentioned that the this survey template will be circulated very soon from our colleagues in Athens to uh, to the Claren head office in Utrecht, and then it can be worked on and extended um, a little bit so that we can collect the feedback from yeah, the official, let's say the official Claren feedback and the deliverable, which will consist of feedback, I think, collected from the individual uh, national coordinators. That's the approach that we that we suggested to Claren. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I really look forward to, uh, maybe it's now a bit too early to talk about this, but I look forward to the to the results and to the ideas, to the suggestions, what Claren can bring to the table in terms of realizing digital language equality in Europe by 2030. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you a lot, Georg. Um, as mentioned um, before, now we will turn to uh, uh, two uh, presenters uh, uh, that have not spoken uh, yet. Uh, representing the Clarin infrastructure, the Clarin Eric, um, Jurgita Bashimani uh, uh, will present the uh, Clarin um, will, from the Lithuanian uh, network will um, present uh, the perspective of, in a way, one national coordinator uh, in 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 the in the in the organized in the group of the National Coordinator Forum. And uh, she will illustrate how a Clarion membership, amongst others, um, uh, has helped uh, to support uh, the national language or if this was the case. So thank you, Yogita. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, well, as, as we've seen here uh, in the discussion, and we all know that uh, various language policy legislation, white papers, uh, they emphasize this digital vulnerability of smaller European languages, uh, uh, the lack of, of technological support. And yes, Lithuanian with uh, more or less 4 million of speakers is one of these languages. Um, and this is particularly uh, uh, why it is important uh, for us to participate in various uh, international language uh, technology related initiatives uh, such as Clarin. So now we, we've been members of, of, of Clarin for seven years and uh, I can say that uh, our consortium, it has grown into one of the leading Lithuanian language research and data storage infrastructures and, and gave uh, Lithuanian researchers uh, a gateway not only to the local but uh, international resources and technology. Uh, now, to exemplify this uh, visibility of our national, national language, uh, I think uh, it can be illustrated, let's say, by the fact that our repository uh, user statistics uh, shows that uh, not only national, but foreign visitors uh, come and see what, what we have here and, and maybe use our resources. Uh, also, we've observed uh, the, this uh, tendency that uh, Lithuanian uh, related tools or resources are being created 
and deposited to our repository, uh, not uh, only by Lithuanian researchers, but uh, by researchers from other countries as well. Let's say, uh, to give some examples, uh, we have this parallel corpus of TED Talks in English, Lithuanian and Hebrew, uh, uh, uploaded by Israeli researcher, or, or um, uh, little at bird by Slovenian researchers. Uh, and this is when you see, this is what's happening. It's really always a very much rewarding experience. So uh, I think that if I would have to make some kind of a thesis statement, uh, um, I think that uh, one of the greatest uh, values of Clarin is this orientation towards uh, cooperation rather than competition. Uh, and this, uh, this means that uh, this ensures the inclusion of, of all languages over or, or under resourced, uh, despite the English proficiency of a particular community. And then uh, to give uh, some of the examples of, of such cooperation uh, within our community could be, let's say, uh, uh, Clarin workshops and, and their outcomes. Uh, let's say several years ago, uh, Vitotas Magnus University researchers, they uh, went to one of the Clarin workshops and uh, they, they were creating the Lithuanian learner corpus and they chose to use an online platform, uh, corpus platform TATOC uh, hosted in the Czech Lindat. Uh, uh, so that was a very nice example of cooperation for people who ha had no idea about Clarin after one of the workshops really established very nice connections. Or, or let's say, uh, I know that at present, uh, a group of Lithuanian researchers uh, participates in the Clarin Initiated Parliament project, uh, which involves all of a certain or, or certain languages or so. So this is, uh, I think, a very nice example of how your national language becomes visible and, and included in this international research community. Uh, and then uh, relating to, to Stephen's presentation, I think that another connecting thread uh, uh, is our joint activities in the uh, Safmaril Knowledge Center uh, for the Morphologically Rich Languages. Uh, once again, kind of you feel that you are a member of, of a larger community with similar interests. Uh, and this uh, provides better opportunities, not only for the researchers, but to all the visitors of, of the website of the Knowledge Center, because once again, this is what you can do. You can uh, 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 you know, address the person with a question uh, to the best expert in the field uh, beyond the borders of a single institution or, or, or country. Uh, and I could go on and go on and just try to show a glimpse of, of, of um, the perspective of one uh, Lithuanian Clarin community and, and uh, there are over 21 member countries uh, uh, in Clarin and I see that some of national coordinators are also here so you are invited to write in the chat box how <laughs> your national language is visible via the modes and means uh, uh, Clarin offers so I don't know maybe so, so maybe that's it. And, and then if we have some discussion questions, I could also contribute then to this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yogita. And uh, um, I, maybe there will be some, some questions on these point, points, but uh, you also made uh, very clear that uh, it is beneficial, uh, what the benefits are for, uh, for members. And uh, maybe this is uh, especially true for uh, members from <coughs> countries with um yeah the fewer speakers but uh of course uh large countries benefit as well so um the last uh speaker uh last but not least our executive director francisca de jong is going to uh, uh, bring the perspective of uh of clarin um for yeah yes hello good afternoon a pleasure to meet you all here. Um, I would like to bring a few points to the fore that, that were brought up by the previous speaker in this panel. Um, let's start with, uh, with your Gita, uh, who uh, clearly explained that um, one of the uh, focus uh, elements in the strategy of Clarin is to work towards um, uh, uh, an infrastructure for many, many languages, so not just European languages. Uh, right now, there are over 1,500 languages covered by the VLO, of course, with quite some diversity in, uh, uh, in the level um, um, of, of coverage and, and uh, the volumes, etc. that was already mentioned in the beginning. But it's also good to mention that 
um, uh, there, the, there are benefits for the countries that are involved, but in principle, Clarin is uh, an open research infrastructure which, which gives access to anybody with an academic background, not necessarily only to those who are uh, working in a member country. Um, so uh, I think uh, Sabine mentioned uh, some of the comments that she received from, um, uh, from her network uh, about concerns about the height of fee, et cetera. And there may be issues that we could address, but uh, in principle, the infrastructure that we offer is for researchers uh, free of charge and, and open. Um, this is of course uh, uh, not to um, underline the differences with other initiatives, because I really feel that the, uh, the nice thing of today is that we uh, uh, clearly see the complementarity and overlap uh, of our communities. And given the fact that diversity in general is such a hot topic nowadays, um, this is uh, a good moment for um, a joint effort towards more support for, um, uh, for language, uh, for the diversity of the languages. First of all, to support the individual languages, but also to support the comparative perspective which is uh, especially for researchers a, a very um, uh, uh, important issue. Uh, Jorgita mentioned the, uh, the parliamentary um, data that we are currently collecting and harmonizing. Um, imagine you could study uh, all kinds of issues related uh, to debates in parliament from a comparative perspective. That's of course a, a very big asset for all European researchers working on either language or political science or uh, many more angles uh, that could be covered there. So um, yes, I'm, I'm very pleased with the, the, the clear sign that uh, we need each other to be stronger. Uh, and, and I agree with, uh, with Georg that you don't have this opportunity all the time to identify where the strategy uh, should focus on. So I would really be pleased to, um, to continue these conversations and um, definitely the very smooth survey structure that Sabine seems to have in place is, would be very welcome and we would love to collaborate there uh, uh, in the future. So I think that's it. Uh, um, I, but what I also would like to point you to is that we try to also collaborate with uh, initiatives um, beyond Europe on, on language diversity. And just uh, uh, this week, an event is going on on um, language documentation on, for languages on the African continent. Uh, this is just one example, but uh, a lot is going on. And um, if, if we uh, organize ourselves well, um, we might even be able to bridge in an effective way towards uh, similar initiatives else, elsewhere in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francisca. And um, if there are some additional questions after this um, uh, cafe, uh, please feel free to uh, ask us to uh, uh, come back to us uh, also on our, your experience on your um, need uh, uh, for more support for more languages and if there are some uh, questions right now to the panelists we still have a few minutes uh, but if not I would also like to uh, um, not only to thank all uh, the panelists and all the speakers of the presentation for this uh, intensive two hours um, but I, I would also like to uh, give uh, the floor to um, Francesca Frontini, who uh, could briefly announce the next cafe. Yes, um, so uh, I think that this is the right time to let you all know how to get uh, more involved uh, with Clarin and to find out about uh, our initiatives. So uh, first of all, as Andreas uh, mentioned at the beginning, um, do not uh, worry if you access uh, the Clarin website in the next few days, you see some changes because we are switching over to the new uh, Clarin portal, which will be effective, effective uh, starting from Thursday. However, all the links that you see here will be persistent in the tradition of Clarin <laughs> and therefore uh, you can still use them. So to 
first of all, please join, um, please subscribe to our news flash and check out uh, all the upcoming events. There's also some uh, open calls. Actually, there is one call concerning training materials, which uh, should be extended actually. So feel free to submit or get in touch if you have any questions. You can follow us also on Twitter. And if you want to tweet about Clarin Cafes, we have an hashtag. And you can stay tuned for the next Clarin Cafes. And in particular, as mentioned also uh, several times during this cafe, the next one will be uh, a Clarin Cafe dedicated to this Parliament 2 phase, because there was a first release with four parliamentary corpora. And now the second uh, release of a parliament uh, has, be, has just uh, made 13, I think, uh, parliament, national parliamentary data, co par uh, comparable corpora available. And uh, if you want to know more about it, uh, it's going to be on June the 28th uh, at 2, uh, 2 p.m. CST. And uh, that's all for me. So thanks again for, to, to you all for coming and see you uh, in a month. Thank you.